Hi everyone, this is Sahiti on behalf of Eddie Eureka and I welcome you to the session on SQL joints. So in this session guys, we'll mainly focus on the different types of joints used in SQL. Now before I start telling you about the different types of joints in SQL, let me just take you to the topics for today's session. So we'll start today's session by understanding what is SQL and then we'll get into the main topic that is what are joints in SQL. Once you understand what is a join in SQL, we'll get into the different types of joints in SQL and finally, I'll end this session by telling you some most common questions asked about joins. So I hope I'm clear with the topics. All right, so that's great. So now let's move forward with the first topic that is introduction to SQL. Now, in the era of 2.5 quintin bytes of data being generated every day, data obviously plays a crucial role in decision making for many business operations. Now, this quite quintessentially makes us handle data in various kinds of databases, and this very much gives us the need of using different kinds of databases. Now, in today's market, there are various kinds of databases like the relational database, the hierarchical database, the network database, and the object oriented database. But yes, SQL is the core of relational database, which is used for accessing and managing the database. Now, if you're someone who is looking forward to learn about SQL and get started with it, you need to definitely understand the concept of SQL joins. So in that note, let's get into the next topic for today's session. That is what are SQL joins? So if someone asks you what are joins in SQL, joins in SQL are commands which are used to combine rows from two or more tables based on a related column between those tables. The joins are predominantly used when a user is trying to extract data from a table which have one to many relationships between them or many to many relationships between them. Joins in SQL are basically commands guys by which you can join two tables and you can get the rows of two tables based on a related column. Now if you ask me what are the different types of joins in SQL, there are mainly four types of joins in SQL. That is the inner join, the left join, the right join and the full join. So let's look into each one of them one by one. Starting with the inner join, the inner join is a type of join that returns those records which have matching values in both the tables. So if you consider table A and table B and you apply an inner join on both these tables, then all those records would be returned which have matching values in both these tables. So for our understanding, I'm going to consider two tables that is the employee table and the projects table. So when I apply the inner join on the employee table and the project table, all those tuples which have matching values in both the tables will be given as output. So the syntax for inner join is as you can see on the screen. That is select table one dot column one table two dot column two table two dot column one and so on. So basically these are the various columns that you want to retrieve from the respective tables from table one in a join table two. That is basically you're applying the inner join on table one and table two and then you have to mention the related column. So that will be mentioned after the on statement. So you'll mention in a join table two on table one dot match in column name is equal to table two dot matching column name. So if I have to just repeat the syntax for you, it's select all the columns, basically whatever columns that you need from table one in a join table two on table one dot match column name equal to table two dot match column name. So if you want to see how in a join can be applied practically, let's move on to my MySQL workbench where I've created these two tables. That is the employee table and the projects table and let's apply the join statements on both these tables. Okay, so before I move forward with this, let me just open a new query tab and let me just clear all the action outputs. So now what I'll do is I'll just write a statement that is select star from employee, right? So I'll just execute this particular statement and you'll see that, you know, you'll get the output as all the details from the employee table that I've already created. I have around five rows with five employee IDs and their first name, last name, age, email ID, phone number and address feeded into this table. So similarly, I'll show you the projects table, right? So let me just remove this and let me type in project and just execute this particular statement and you'll see the different column attributes in the project table. So as you can see, I have the project ID, the employee ID, the client ID, project name and the project start date. Client ID can be basically considered for all those clients. So you can have a separate table for the client IDs. So guys, if you see in both these tables, there's a matching column that is the employee ID, right? So the basic relation between both these tables is that a specific employee having a specific employee ID can work on n number of projects, right? He can either work on the project number one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, right? So as you can see, my employee ID three works on two projects. That is the triple three project and the triple four project. 
and similarly you can see that you know there are employees with the employee ID is 978 but yes their information was not present in the employee table right so let's apply the joint statements on these tables and understand what we get as output so initially I had explained you what the inner joint was so when you apply inner join on two tables you can clearly see that you know you get matching values from both the tables so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply inner join on both these tables so for that you simply have to write a query so what I'll do is I've already executed it before I'll just copy and paste the query over here so that I can explain it for you guys so what I've done is I've just selected the employee ID the employee first name the employee last name the project ID and the project name to be retrieved from both the employee and the project tables and then I've applied an inner join on the employee in the project table. So for that, I've just written a query as you can see on the screen. It's select employee.mpid, employee.mf name, employee.ml name, that is basically the first name and the last name, then project.project .project ID, project.project .project name from employee in a join project on employee.mpid is equal to project.mpid because mpid is basically a matching column in both the tables, right? So let's just execute this particular query. So when you execute this particular query, you can clearly see that all the matching values from both the tables have been retrieved. That is basically all the employees working on a specific project and their respective employee ID, employee first name, last name, project ID and the project name has been retrieved. So guys, that was about inner join. Now let's move forward to our next type of join that is the left join. Now as you can see on the screen, now the left join or the left outer join returns all those records from the left table and also those records which satisfy a condition from the right table. So if you consider table A and table B as two tables on which you want to apply the left join, then table A would be considered as the left table and table B would be considered as the right table. And when you apply a left join on table A and table B, you will clearly see that you know all the records from the left table would be retrieved and also the records which satisfy a condition from the right table would also be retrieved. Also, let me tell you that you know the records which have no matching values in the right table, the output or the result set will contain the null values, right? So basically, if you have around three rows from the left table which have no matching records from the right table, then those records will have null values. So the syntax for left join is as you can see in the screen. It's just similar to inner join. You just have to replace the word inner join to left join. You can change the syntax like you know select table one dot column one, table two dot column two, and so on. That is basically the different column attributes that you want to retrieve from table one and then left join table two on table one dot matching column name equal to table two dot matching column name. So guys, that was about left join. So now let's just again shift back to my MySQL workbench and then I'll show you how you can apply the left join. I'm just going to use a similar query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve the first name, the last name, the project ID and the project name from both the employee and the project table and then apply a left join on it. So for that I've written a query as you can see on the screen that is select employee.emp name, employee.emp l name, project.project .project ID, project.project .project name from employee left join project on employee.emp ID is equal to project.emp ID, right? So basically that is because you know this is the matching column between both the tables. So I'm going to just execute this particular query. So once you execute this query you can clearly see the output all the records from the left table and for those records which do not have any matching record for the right table we have a null value present. So if you remember we had five employees in the employee table right. So basically that was Vardhan, Himani, Ayushi, Swati and Heman. And if you remember Ayushi worked on two projects. So both the project details are present over here and Heyman worked on no project, right? So since he worked on no project, the values present in the project ID and the project name are null values by default. So guys, that was about the left join. Now let's move forward to the next type of join that is the right join. So the right join or the right outer join returns all the records from the right table and also those records which satisfy a condition from the left table. So I know guys, this sounds quite similar to the left outer join. Yes, it definitely is. The only difference between both of them is that you know the right outer join returns all the records from the right table and also the records which satisfy a condition from the left table coming to the left outer join. The left outer join returns all the records from the left table and also those records which satisfy a condition from the right table. So it's just vice versa of both of them and also you know the records which have no matching values in the left table the output or the result set would contain the null values. So guys that was about the right join. Now the syntax of right join is as you can see in the screen. It's again really similar to the left join. 
it's simple it's select table one dot column one table two dot column two and so on so basically all the column values from both the tables that you want to retrieve from table one right join table two on table one dot matching column name equal to table two dot matching column name so the only difference between syntax if you've seen the three joins that you saw till now was the word inner left and right else everything else would be same so you just have to apply the same logic so for that what we'll do is we'll again shift back to my mysql workbench now what i'll do is i'll just copy the query i'll paste it over here again and then i'll just change this word to right so i'll just apply right join now i'll just execute this query again so when we execute this query you'll clearly see that you know the employee first name last name project id and project name are retrieved from both the tables all those records from the right table are with retrieved and the records which satisfy a condition from the left table are also retrieved but yes those records which have no matching values from the left table have null values present in the record you can clearly see that you know Varun, Himani, Ayushi and Swati worked on projects and then they had their specific project IDs and project name but yes there were employees who worked on project 6, 7, 8 but their employee information was not present in the employee table so that's the reason there's null value present in the records of 6, 7, 8 project. So guys, that was about right join. Now moving forward to a final type of join that is the full join. So the full join or the full outer join returns all those records which either have a matching value in the left table or in the right table. So basically, if you consider table A and table B and you apply full join on both these tables, then it will return all those records which either have the matching value in table A or in table B. Now the syntax for full join is really simple. It's again the same as the other three joins, but you just have to mention the word full join. So the syntax is select table one dot column one, table two dot column two, table two dot column one, and so on. Basically, the different column attributes from table one full join table two on table one dot matching column name equal to table two dot matching column name. So that's basically again the related column that is basically a matching column. Now to see how full join works, let me just shift back to my MySQL workbench. Now let me just tell you one thing over here. Now since I'm showing you how to apply joins on SQL, let me just tell you that you know on MySQL the full join is not applicable. So that's the reason since I'm showing you on MySQL workbench, the word full join will not work. To just show you the working of full join, I'm just going to use the word union in between both these queries. So what's going to happen is we're going to retrieve all the values from the left table and the matching value to the right table that is through the left join and then we're going to union it with all the matching values from the right table and also the values which satisfy a condition from the left table. So this is nothing but full join but since we're working on MySQL workbench and the word full join doesn't work. So I'm going to just use the word union. I'm just going to retrieve the project ID the employee first name and the employee last name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just execute this particular query. So when I execute this particular query, you'll clearly see that, you know, we're getting all the values from the left table, which satisfy a condition from the right table and also all the values from the right table, which again satisfy a condition or match the values from the left table, right? So if you consider the first left join condition where we got all the employee details and the project details, you'll see that, you know, we've got Vardhan, Himani, Ayushi twice, Swati, Heyman and the respective project details. Since Heyman did not work on any project, the project ID was null over here. Now similarly, if we consider the output for the right join where you know we took all the records from the right table and took matching values from the left table, we saw that you know for the project IDs triple six, triple seven, triple eight, there was no employee information present, right? So that's the reason we have null values over here for employee first name and employee last name. So guys, that was about full join. So I hope you've understood the different types of joins. The syntax is really simple for all the different types of joins guys. You just have to change the word in all the different types of joins. For inner join you use the word inner. For the left join you use left join. For the right you use the right join. And for the full join you use the word full join. So if you just want to apply left join what you simply do is you mention all the columns. That is you mention the keyword select and mention the table name dot column name. And then you mention from table one left join table two on and then you mentioned the matching column names from both the tables, right? So you mentioned table one dot matching column name equal to table two dot matching column name. So guys, that's how you can use the different types of join. I hope it's really clear to you guys. If you have any further queries, then you can definitely let us know in the comment section. Now that you know the different types of joins in SQL, let me just cover a few important questions that are generally asked in interviews about joins. 
So the first question is what is a natural join and in which situations is a natural join used? A natural join is also a join operation that is used to give an output based on the columns in both the tables between which the join operation is implemented. So that's what a natural join is guys. It basically aims to give you output based on the columns between which this join is applied. Now basically natural join is used when you want to make sure that you know the number of columns returned are less. So for example, if you see on the screen, we have two tables, right? That is table one having two columns and table two having two columns over here. Now table one had column names column one column two and table two again has column names column one and column three. Now if you apply a natural join on both these tables, you'll clearly see that you'll get an output as column one column two column three and the respective records. But in the same scenario, if you apply an inner join, what you will clearly see that you know you'll get an output like one dot column one that is basically for table one dot column one and then one dot column two that is table one dot column two and the respective records would be stored. Now if you see over here, you'll clearly see that you know when you apply the inner join, you'll have a redundancy of data. That is you know the column one data is getting repeated again. That is basically it is repeated twice, but in this case of natural join, it's just mentioned once. So this was a scenario of two tables where you know the output was so simple. But yes, if you look into a daily basis where you know database administrators deal with n number of tables and then they want to apply the join operation on these two tables, You'll clearly see that you know if they apply an inner join then that would create a lot of problem of redundancy of data and obviously more number of columns would be generated. But yes in the same scenario if they apply a natural join the number of columns would be reduced at a maximum extent. So that's the situation guys where you apply a natural join. So if you're ever asked you know in which situations do you apply a natural join. You can just answer this question by simply saying that you know you can apply a natural join when you want the number of columns to be less. So I hope I'm clear with this point. Now moving on to our second question that is how to map many to many relationships using joins. Now it's a known fact that you know the joins are basically used to map one to many relationships. But yes if there's a confusion you know how to map many to many relationships. Let me just tell you that you know you need to use two joint statements. So to explain you why two joint statements are required. You can consider a scenario where you have three tables that is the employee table the projects table and the technologies table. Now let's assume that you know each employee is working on a single project. So this obviously means that you know one project cannot be assigned to more than one employee. Now similarly if you consider a project can be based on multiple technologies and any technology can be used in any number of projects. This kind of relationship is basically a many to many relationship. Now to apply the join operation on the many to many relationships what you can simply do is you can have three tables that is the projects table and the technologies table itself. So basically these are the two tables which have many to many relationships between each other and also we can have an extra table that is the project to technologies table. Now the project to technologies table will hold the combination of project and technology in every row. Now let's say we have a project A. Let's say this project A has three technologies that is DevOps microservices and Hadoop. Now you have to map these technologies to the project right. Now this project to technologies table will hold the record of every project technology combination. So it will hold a record of project A to DevOps and then project A to again Hadoop and project A to microservices. Similarly it will have n number of records for n number of projects and m number of technologies. So this table is really really important in this scenario and this table basically aims to map the item on the projects table to the items on the technologies table. So that multiple projects can be assigned to one or more technologies. So now that you have three tables that is the projects table the technologies and the projects to technologies table. You need to use two joint statements to link all these tables together. That is use the first joint statement to join the project to technologies to projects table and then we have to use the second joint statement to join the project to technologies table to technologies table. Now this is how all the projects and the technologies which have a many to many relationships between them will be linked with each other. So it's really simple guys whenever you have an end to end relationship between two tables and you want to apply a join operation between these two tables. You just have to create another table you know which can have all the combinations of the previous table and then you apply a join operation from table A to table C and then table B to table C. So I hope I'm clear with this point. Now let's move forward with our next question that is what is a hash join. Now hash joins are also a type of joins which are used to join large tables or an instance where the user wants most of the joint table rows. 
So whenever the user wants the most of the joint table rows or when you want to join two large tables, you basically use this type of join that is basically the hash join. Now the hash join algorithm is basically a two step algorithm. So it has mainly the build phase and the probe phase. So in the build phase, you basically create an in memory hash index on the left side of input. And in the probe phase, you go through the right side of input each row at a time and then find the matches using the index created in the build phase. So hash join is again a type of join which is used to join large tables and it has mainly two steps that is the build phase and the probe phase. In the build phase, you basically create an in memory hash index on the left side of input. And in the probe phase, you go through the right side of input each row at a time and find the match using the index created in the build phase. So guys, that was about the hash join. Now let's move forward with our next question. That is what is a self join and a cross join? So the self join in other words is a join of a table to itself. So this basically means that, you know, each row in a table is joined with itself. So when you apply a self join to a table, just remember that, you know, each row in a table is joined with itself. Now coming to cross join. The cross join is a type of join in which a join clause is applied to each row of a table to every row of the other table. So whenever you apply a cross join to tables, then just remember that, you know, a join clause is applied to each row of a table to every row of the other table. Also, when the where condition is used, this type of join behaves as an inner join. And when the where condition is not present, it behaves like a Cartesian product. So you just have to remember two points. The first point is that whenever you apply a cross join on specific tables, a join clause is applied on each row of a single table to every row of the other table. And also when the where condition is present, this type of join behaves as an inner join. And when the where condition is not present, it behaves like a Cartesian product. Now let's move forward with our final question. That is how to perform join operation on three tables. Now, if you remember in the previous questions, I had discussed a question where, you know, we understood how to map end to end relationships using join operations, right? So over there, if you remember, we used three tables. That is the projects table, the technologies table and the project to technologies table. Now to apply a join operation on three tables, we use two join statements, right? That is to join table A to table C and then table B to table C. So basically to apply a join operation on three tables, you need to use two join statements. So guys with this we come to an end of this session. I hope you found this session informative and I hope you understood what SQL joins are. If you have any further queries related to SQL joins, please comment in the comment section below and we'll make sure we reply to you as soon as possible. Thank you and have a great day.